Trudeau and Sissi has to be careful when it comes to discussing national security issues, and all of this follows a global news report earlier this month that included stunning allegations about Chinese foreign interference operations. We're going to talk about this. Greg Fergus is the parliamentary secretary to the prime minister. Michael Chong is the conservative foreign affairs minister, and Matthew Green is an Ontario New Democrat MP. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining me. Great to be here. Glad to join you. Mr. Chung, I'd like to start with you. You've heard the disclaimers from the Prime Minister that there's limits to what he can say because of national security concerns. The RCMP has said there's limits to what it can say because of an investigation. What do you need to hear from the Prime Minister right now on this issue, given the limitations they say that they're bound by? Well, I think the Prime Minister needs to come clean with the details of what the government does know about these allegations and reveal publicly uh, what happened. Here's why. Uh, CSIS advised the Prime Minister in a top-secret briefing note that we've obtained at committee that the way to combat foreign interference is through sunshine and transparency and to make public the details of foreign interference in order to combat it. Because often foreign interference from malevolent actors like Beijing doesn't rise to the level of criminality. So the only way really to counter it is for the government to come clean with details. And I think one good example of how some of our Five Eyes intelligence allies are doing exactly that is last summer. Last summer, MI5 and the British government, as well as the Speaker of the UK House of Commons, came clean with the fact that there was a Beijing agent in the UK Parliament. Her name was Christine Lee. She was publicly mm -hmm. identified, as were the MPs in the House of Commons, in the UK House of Commons, that were the target of her donations. They made it all public, MP, those MPs took action to cut her off from contact and to maintain the integrity of the UK Parliament. And that's the sort of thing that the Trudeau government needs to do here as well. Given the letter we've seen from Brenda Lucky, though, that there are broader criminal investigations into foreign activities of some sort, it's unclear to me if it's directly related to the election or not. Does that not put a limit around the level of disclosure they could maybe do? Is there a way to just catalog things that aren't that sensitive that can go public with? Yeah, I think there's a lot more the government could reveal. It's clear in the CSIS briefing notes that we've obtained. Mm -hmm. It's clear uh, two things are happening. First, it's clear that Beijing is one of the source countries for foreign interference in our, in our country. And secondly, they are targeting riding associations and candidates. We just don't know which riding associations and which candidates. And so that's why the government needs to come clean with information about which riding associations and which candidates are being targeted so parties right. and candidates can take action. Right, and it, the report suggests it's at least the Conservatives and the Liberals who have been targeted. Matthew Green, I, I'm wondering uh, what your sense is of how satisfied the New Democrats are with what they've heard from the government to this point. Well, I think there's definitely a growing cynicism in our democratic institutions. You only have to look at what that can result in down the states when you talk about the possibility of not having free and fair elections or the validity of government. All of these things we take very seriously. And I think that there ought to be a process that happens after an investigation where there is a deep dive, a deep study within the House of Commons to ensure that if there needs to be policy changes, legislative changes, uh, we've heard you know, the need for greater transparency and accountability. We certainly and fully support that. This should be a nonpartisan issue and one that I think requires the seriousness and respect from all parties involved. Uh, Mr. Fergus, I don't think anyone is suggesting that if there's a police operation or a counter espionage operation underway uh, to counter these sorts of things that the Prime Minister needs to give the details of that. But there, surely there has to be a more fulsome explanation that uh, your government can offer Canadians uh, on, on an issue of such seriousness, is there not? Well, there is, and and I think there is an important aspect, an important uh, principle at stake, and I think all, both uh, Michael and uh, Matthew had brought it up, and that is, of course, we should let these a non. This is a nonpartisan issue that all parties take very seriously. Any attack on our democratic institutions is an attack against all of us, attack against Canada, and things that we need to take seriously. And this is the reason why the the, the government has set up a security and intelligence threats to elections task force, a site task force, uh, to non-partisan folks, uh, including our intelligence services, to take part of that, to making sure that they assure, first of all, that our elections and our democratic institutions are uh, f um, fair and free. And they came to that conclusion for the 2019 election. Of course, they're investigating the 2021 one. Uh, the RCMP, as you pointed out, is actively investigating uh, on these issues. And I think the difference between us and the UK is that finally their intelligence services in cooperation with their, with their uh, political institutions came to a conclusion. 
So let us let the work get done. And then at that point, there can be an opportunity for us to bring forward charges or and to reveal what has been done. Okay, but if we know the 2019 election was fair, and I don't think anyone here is disputing the outcomes of the last two elections, I, and there's no evidence that any interference rose to the level to swing these, but I've uh, got a follow-up question for Mr. Fergus. But if they are targeting riding levels and, and at that very base level, and people don't know the tactics or the techniques foreign actors are using, how can they take precautions to safeguard against it? You know what I mean? There's a by-election coming up in Mississauga Lakeshore. How would we know if someone was meddling in it if no one will tell the country the tactics and the techniques of these foreign actors? Well, I think probably because those tactics and techniques are, are constantly evolving. Um, I think the most important thing is to, what we've done is that we brought up, there was a recognition that there were some gaps in our election uh, financing laws. So there was a law that was brought in C-76 to making sure that we close those gaps on foreign funding into our elections. That was passed. Um, there are toughening laws that we have against hacking and money laundering and other crimes. We all know about misinformation and disinformation, and there's some active debates going on on how we try to regulate that. I think there are those kind of measures and others, which I hope that we will be able to take. Okay, Mr. Chong? Yeah, I think it's important to note that federal authorities concluded, whether it was CSIS or Elections Canada, that there was no question about the overall integrity of the election. Right. Overall was the critical word they used. There was also no question that overall the elections were free and fair, and no one is questioning the overall integrity of the election or that overall elections were free and fair. What we are questioning is the integrity of certain candidates and certain riding associations in the 2019 and 2021 elections. And so that's why we need to know who those candidates were and what those riding associations were so that we can take action because this may not rise to the level of criminality. There may never be an investigation that leads to charges here, but this activity clearly is going on as our intelligence agencies are telling us. So we need to know names so that parties and candidates can take action to prevent this from happening. Right. Now, the Prime Minister said he, he doesn't know names, was never briefed on names, the specific names. But he's the head of government. He has the immense powers to make this information public as the UK government government did last right. summer. Uh, Matthew Green, what's your view on that, that to Mr. Chong's point that on a big picture level, the election may have been fine, but you know, there are reports of them trying to put agents in the office of members of parliament, which seems like a well, thing and, we should know about, you know? And, and beyond that, I think it's an important to reflect on just the declining participation in elections. If people don't think their vote matters and first past the post, they're not going to participate when they hear that there's a potential for foreign interference from nomination processes all the way through to the choosing who's on a ballot that undermines our democratic institutions. And so I think it's incumbent in this moment, not just to reflect upon the allegations of China, but any tampering in any, uh, you know, be it digital or be it boots on the ground, foreign interference with our elections processes. And I would agree, it must be an open and frank conversation with the most amount and the highest amount of transparency possible so that when Canadians go to the polls, they can vote with the confidence that they are in a free and fair democratic process. And whether or not it tipped the scales for the entire election, we would, we would tend to agree every single seat in the House of Commons is sacred right. and needs to be protected from any type of foreign interference. So, so, Mr. Fergus, on that point, 2019 looks like it was okay on a big picture level, but it's about the next election and the one after that and the one after that. And your point earlier that in the UK they were able to make public disclosure because their intelligence services had reached a conclusion. Should I infer from that that once CSIS or the RCMP reach a conclusion, we might get disclosure from your government? Well, certainly I know that if they were to reach a conclusion that laws were broken and that people were uh, interfering uh, uh, that their charges would be laid. That would be made public. I'm certain that all of that within the context of this discussion will be made, uh, brought together. But for, short of criminality, for, sir, for disclosure. A, a disclosure of tactics well, and attempts? Like, cause this, well, I feel this is something we need to know about to protect our elections. Our elections, first of all, and, and I'm certain my colleagues would agree with me, are some of the, we have some of the tightest controls in terms of uh, financing of our elections. Uh, and that's a wonderful thing. And that's been brought in by successive governments to making sure that, you know, we make sure that money does not play uh, a, an undue role in, in terms of determining how elections are won and lost and fought and discussed. 
these these are something that Canada needs to, uh, is proud about and we should be proud about and that's the reason why elections Canada is, is sought uh, over the world over to help design and uh, provide elections in, in other countries that want to have the same right. standards that we have but better is always possible and so this is the reason why election authorities as well as our intelligence and police authorities are looking into these allegations because it affects all of us. Okay, uh, we're tight on time. A quick final thought for Mr. Chong and then Mr. Green and then we got to say goodbye. Yeah, um, the Prime Minister is not following his own intelligence experts' advice. Uh, the, the head of CSIS indicated in a top secret briefing note that we obtained that one way to counter foreign interference is through sunshine and transparency mm -hmm. and to publicly reveal the details of foreign interference. The, the Prime Minister hasn't done that. This all came to light because of an investigative report from Global News on November 7th. Uh, and so the Prime Minister needs to heed the advice of his intelligence experts and come clean with all the details of which candidates and which riding associations are involved with Beijing's foreign interference. And if he doesn't know, he should find out is what you're saying. That's right. right. Okay. Matthew Green, final David. word to you. Yeah, and, and you know, my friend, Mr. Fergus, he wasn't answering the question. The question was, is that would the government take the responsibility? Will Justin Trudeau, as prime minister, take the responsibility to come clean with Canadians? If it doesn't meet criminality, then we also have an obligation to absolve any doubt in the cynicism. So transparency doesn't just solve foreign interference. It also so uh, solves our declining participation in our democratic processes. Okay, and, you know, and Mr. David, Fergus, I, because I you're a name check, I, I, I'm going to let you reply to that. I, I, know, I don't know if you can speak for the Prime Minister or if you want to, but give it a shot. Well, I can certainly say you could judge the Prime Minister by his actions, and that's the reason why they set up the Security and Intelligence uh, Threats to Elections Task Force. That's the reason why there are these reports which are done. This is the reason why all parties but yet it still happened, are invited right? to be part of a real-time uh, 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 briefings that are provided by intelligence services during the campaigns. Right. So... All parties are informed on this and are kept up to date as to what's happening in terms of foreign interference. We simply okay. can't just take the Prime Minister's word for it. I'm sorry. And, and that's the reason why you folks are involved in part of that committee process as well. Okay, uh, I, we are, have gone over time, so I do have to stop it there. I want to thank you all, Greg Ferguson, Matthew Green, and Michael Chung. Thanks for coming in.